always thought when I'm making something, it's usually the first idea that I come up with that's really good, or it's the hundredth idea. And it's and when I'm digging through those fucking ninety nine ideas, it there it's it feels like this is bullshit. What am I even doing? I'm pathetic. I'm not good at this. I can't do this. I'm fucking kidding myself. But it, it, I'm scraping the bottom of the barrel. But eventually, weirdly, that the bottom of the barrel turns into the bottom of a magician's hat, and it always spins me out. It all, it all, it always messes with my head. And the same way, alcoholics will often talk about how they had to hit rock bottom before their life became this magical adventure. And there's this strange door in the bottom of rock bottom that it flips everything. Everything tur- turns inside out. Fucking a bloody a night storm turns into a, a sun shower rainbow in the middle of summer. And you can't just willfully try and find rock bottom. You can't simulate it. You can't deliberately... Just life's going to do it to you. Life's going to fuck with you anyway, no matter what you do. At some point, you're fucked. <laughs> it's just how it happens. And and they're kind of miraculous. They're kind of weird gifts. At the time, they don't feel like them. But they, yeah, it's the cliche of a phoenix rising from the ashes. And not all phoenixes rise from the ashes. They die. Um, and so maybe that's... Maybe that's not a bad thing. Um, But I've always felt the same. Like when I'll go for a run, the first four minutes of the run, it it fucking kills me. Like my legs are dying. So I can't can't keep doing this. I've got to stop. But I know I I need to run for 20 minutes. So I want to start sweating. I I just want to feel like I've done some exercise. But if I keep pushing through that first four minutes... Something miraculous happens, and I I get energy from nowhere. It's like I'm I'm making something from nothing. It's fucking crazy. It it always spins me out. I I love that idea of how the with creativity, scraping the bottom of the barrel turns into the bottom of a magician's hat, and going for a run. I get energy from nowhere after almost collapsing. And I feel like these doors are, they're not just limited to creativity and exercise. I feel like they're everywhere. I always i always feel like I, I want to almost sometimes willfully nosedive into something to try and find the door on the other side of it, like the calm inside a hurricane, as they call it, or a tornado or whatever in America. But yeah, talking about yeah, life just doing it to you. I remember in my 20s, I lost my job, my relationship and my home all in two days. And it's like, oh, fuck, what am I going to do? But weirdly, within that week, I, I was like, oh, holy shit, I'm not dead. I'm alive and I'm even more alive than before. This is, this is wild. And it was like, it's like I'd woken up. I, like, I felt like I was asleep. I, I I got in, gone from my teens into my twenties, and it was I was like mid to late twenties when that happened, and all of a sudden I like it was a massive wake up, and and I and I reconfigured parts of my life to to make it stronger, but yeah, at the time it felt like a death, felt like a fucking death, like a relationship end feels like a death, let alone losing your job that can feel slightly, let alone losing your home, they all that all all three at once and. Yet, that happens to everyone all the time, that, that shit. To happen in two days was pretty nuts, but yeah. So I've always found that mistakes eventually turn into something good. And as Cormac McCarthy um, once said, you never know what worse luck your bad luck has saved you from. And maybe sometimes I feel like that door is is almost like a death. It's almost like death stores, it's called, and, and a, re- a weird rebirth. Sometimes I think there's, there's nothing you can learn from your mistakes because eventually that mistake is going to be the right thing to do. And I, sometimes I feel like this, life's just this weird, crazy game where you're always losing, but that's what makes it beautiful. And we're never ready f- for these situations. And and you can't simulate them. You can't just go, okay, I want to find that door. I'm going to willfully ruin my life. Although I do have a friend who 
who who actually does it, he he's fucking fearless. Like it's sometimes I think, oh, there's is that is that normal? <laughs> but he but he's lived this incredible life. He's like I haven't spoken to him in a year because he's not on social media. He's overseas. He doesn't. He's got he's got nothing to do with this culture. But he's he he's the only person I know who willfully does a nose dive and it nearly always ends up in some crazy rainbow soaked utopia. I'm just not brave enough to do that. But I'm but I'm aware of of when it's happened to me when it's been forced on me how good shit can become. But it's yeah. Ah, oh, now I'm getting scared. Am I will? Am I willing this on myself? Am I willing in another growth spurt? <laughs> I guess the closest it's come for me at the moment is going, doing this or preparing for this um, show that I'm doing. I've never done one before, and it yeah, for it it does it does freak me out, and I'm kind of looking forward to being on the other side of it. Just like ah, oh, come on, just let's get this thing over and done with. But I'm trying to. I am trying to force myself into looking forward to it. I know force is the worst thing you can do, but every now and again I'll go. Ah, oh, I'll for the first five minutes of it I'll be nervous, and then after for the fifty-five minutes after that, I'll just fall into it and I'll be fine. And it'll be it'll be going through that that first five minutes that door of of where the fuck is this going, like the first five minutes of going for a run, where it's just like, I'm going to collapse, I'm going to fall, and then all of a sudden I just get this burst of energy that comes from nowhere. I'm thinking that's pretty much what's going to happen when I do this this show, and yeah, I, I'm hoping, I'm pro- crossing my fingers, but I can't actually, I can't plan for that, because as soon as life knows that that's what I think is going to happen, then life that's not that's not what life is going to let happen fucking life <laughs> it's always trying to it always wrong foots you and you and you've got to turn the wrong foot into a dance and i'm pretty hopeless at that sometimes or well, often i was already i already quote this morning by miles davis and he said if you play a bung note it's the next note that either makes it good or bad i love that i've been collecting a bunch of quotes that i've put in my show notes um my set list to, and that's one of them but it's been yeah it's been it's been interesting preparing for this because i know that all the preparation it just makes me less nervous but really it's just going to happen how it happens and how it unfolds when it does happen but i do love that magical door hidden in rock bottom that it lets you live another life you get to live more than one life in this one life by finding those doors in rock bottom it's a strange, unexpected gift. I've, and I've always loved how things can get so dark that they become ridiculous. How it's, it's happened before. It, it, things flip. They get to a point where things flip. But there are magical little doors everywhere. It's, they're sprinkled around the day. They're invisible. They don't have to be at rock bottom. They can just be in the blade of grass. If you stare at it long enough, it almost becomes a portal to another world. It almost becomes like an eternal moment. I remember sitting by the train tracks when I was sitting by train tracks for 10 years, riding and watching trains. I'd always be watching just the, the breeze through the spray of yellow flowers that I was sitting in and the bushes. It just felt like it, it, an eternal moment. It just constantly felt like this eternal moment after being trapped in the nine to five. There was a cartoon that Michael Looney did once, Australian cartoonist philosopher. I think he, it was something like, you've got to make yourself very small to pass through the door of death. And these doors are very small. Like they're, the, the doors that aren't in rock bottom, they're very small doors and they're around everywhere. Anyway, if you'd like to leave a review for this podcast, it's um, on Apple or Spotify or wherever you're listening. I'd love that.